office by saying congratulations on the film. I absolutely loved it. So I've got to ask, where did the idea for the film come from in the first place? You know, what it was, was I was looking to do a documentary series about internet entrepreneurs, and I was actually pitching it to ABC, like, uh, not the American one, like the Australian Broadcast Corporation, because they were looking for series. And, uh, man, you know, I had come across Sierra Lynch uh, accidentally, honestly, through a YouTube clip. It was a pirated YouTube clip. Um, and there was just something about me that, something about her that just in, intrigued me. You know, I just wanted to know more. I went to her website. My mind was kind of blowing. I mean, I'm somewhat familiar, you know, honestly, with the fetishes that she caters to and that kind of thing. But uh, there, were, there were things I didn't know about, like financial domination I didn't really know about, some of these more extreme fetishes. So that intrigued me. Um, then just combined with the fact she had this charisma, she had some kind of star power, and I, I just thought there was something really intelligent about how she constructed this whole persona. So reached out to her to meet her, you know, about potentially doing a documentary, uh, you know, doing like an, an episode of this documentary series. But we, we went to Portland, filmed, and um, I think we both knew there was something bigger there. We kind of knew right away, yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. What was that like actually flying over to meet her? And then how did the idea of the the film come about where it, did it kind of goes away a little bit from being a documentary as well? Well, you know, it's interesting. I mean, look, the, the honest truth is, because, you know, no one has really been that correct. People have very strong opinions about what's real and what's not. And, you know, oh, the first half of the film's a documentary, then it then he turned it into fiction. And it's really not like that at all. I mean... It's actually kind of constructed from the very first scene. And honestly, I knew after about three days that I did not want to make a traditional documentary. Yeah. Uh, I knew I wanted to do something different because her world screened out for it. You know, her her whole career is about, you know, she, she really kind of blurs the line between reality and, and fantasy. You know, like she makes men's fantasies come to life. She brings them into reality through a role play session. So I just thought, you know what? If I just do a pure documentary, I'm kind of missing an opportunity here. You know, there is something richer and weirder that I could do where there's some blend of truth and fiction that I felt would capture her and her world more accurately than a documentary would. And I'm not just trying to be cute or ironic. Like, I sincerely mean that. Like, I truly think this fictionalized movie gets deeper into who she is and the world than a traditional documentary would have. So I knew early on I was going to do it that way. Um, look, she was just she was a great subject uh, right from the beginning. Um, but honestly, look, she's a very well adjusted person. She's you know pretty down to earth. She she kind of didn't give me confidence in it as a documentary. I didn't really see it getting there as a documentary for ninety minutes. There was kind of a lack of conflict. She was very confident in her life choices. You know, not that I would want to make a film about someone who was a victim of the sex industry or anything like that. But you know, you just need that conflict that's going to drive it and hold people um and you know i just felt this was a better way to go you know to take her reality and kind of turn it on its head a little bit uh that felt like the way to go yeah i actually love the fact that the film was like that because for me it felt like a little bit of a mix this is going to sound really weird but a little bit of a mix of a little bit of a mix of kenny along with a found footage kind of film so how do you go about you, you said that it all came about after you met her. How how long did it actually take for you then to go away and come up with what the storyline was going to be for the film? Oh, yeah, look, honestly, I mean, look, I met her in about 2014, uh, and look, I'm not trying to tell you, oh, I had the entire arc of the movie in my head after meeting her. It wasn't like that at all, but we did three, you know, days of docu true, pure documentary shooting, like sit-down interviews, researching, exploring her world, meeting her family, um, but... That was what gave me the impetus. And then I went away and, you know, I, I it took me really probably, 15, 16, it took me a couple years. You know, it really took me a couple years to then gestate, kind of come up with a screenplay. I mean, I wrote a traditional 90-page screenplay. We did then kind of ad lib off of that and add new scenes as we went. But um, it, it, it took the traditional kind of two years, you know, of development. We were still filming things and there wasn't a lot of money at that point. I'd fly up to Portland, we'd shoot some stuff, it would just be me and her with our cameras. Um, but that allowed me to kind of cut some footage together and do a Kickstarter, and we raised about $30,000 from that, and that kind of gave confidence to my producer, hey, you know, I'm going to put some more serious money into this, and we're really doing it. So it was about two years. In 2016, it really started rolling, and we had some money to, to, to work with, you know. Yeah. How difficult is it as a director, and, and for yourself as well as an actor, how difficult is it to kind of act 
as yourself, but act in a film, and also direct Sierra doing the same thing. Oh, it's super hard. It's super. I mean, it was it was exhausting. You know, I mean, um, yeah. Look, just directing yourself to an acceptable performance is very challenging. Um, because, you know, if you're not in the scene, if, if you've still got your director's hat on and not your actor's hat, um, it just reads, you know, and you, you can look at it. You look at it and you go, God, this, this actor who happens to me is, is not here. He's glazed behind the eye. So you got to be so present and in the moment uh, and just let go of the fact you're directing it and controlling it and kind of be out of control. And that's kind of the skill set, you know. Um, but I did, I researched a lot, you know, of directors who had acted in their own films and I, I kind of got some, some great advice, you know, like, I, I think the thing is that you want to have done as much directing as you can before you get on set. You want to have really made strong choices so that you can let go and just be in the moment as an actor. Um, if you if you arrive at set with no idea what you're going to do, it's going to be a hard day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, i got to say, honestly, Sierra, who's not a trained actor, was one of the best scene partners I've ever had. I mean, she was so in the moment uh, and so alive. That, that it was really easy to work off her. And um, we had a great rapport and shorthand, you know, by the time we were making it, because it had been a few years of knowing each other and becoming friends. So there was a lot of trust there. So we could do these scenes where we we're having a fight or, you know, having a sex scene or, you know, these really kind of challenging scenes. There was enough trust there that we could just lock in and, and really get where we needed to get to pretty quickly in the end. Yeah. I guess for the actors listening to this as well, what would your advice be doing a film like this? Because you've also got that added element where you actually have to almost put in a more natural performance than what most actors would, because, yeah, yeah. how do you go about doing that? Trial and error, you know, and I hid my bad scenes from the audience. I mean, I'm very upfront about that. You know, there were some that, you know, maybe they would have been fine in a, a more constructed dramatic movie, but they just didn't cut it here. You know, and my editor was very honest. He'd say, look, you know, this is fine if this was like a pure narrative film, not in a documentary. But this scene here, like your performance isn't right. The tone is off. So I simply didn't use those ones. Um, you know, I hid my mistakes in yeah. the edit. Um, but, but you're right. You know, and I had actors, you know, like Joseph Reitman, Sarah Armanius. Jazz on Yoda. I mean, these are people you can just give a script to. They are professional actors. They will make that come to life. You know, Sierra's not like that. We had to work off treatments. We had to sort of improvise more. So blending them together was was really uh, the challenge of it, to make it all kind of mesh together. And um, that was just, you know, having a lot of options for the edits. And um, me kind of breaking the professional actors down to a point where it was messy enough and spontaneous enough and kind of keeping them on their toes so that it would match the stuff I was doing with Sierra. Yeah. So it was a very precarious balancing act, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. What was the toughest scene for you to do as an actor? Toughest scene as an actor? <laughs> wow. Okay, let me think here. Well, you know, I did this whole scene where I just completely broke down in tears, blubbering, and she'd completely broken me, and it didn't end up being in the film. That was probably the hardest one. And uh, that was always like the performance I was proudest of. But, you know, you got to kill your baby sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think... I think the challenging ones are any ones where you're really moving the plot along. Um, but, but trying to make it feel organic and blend in with that documentary style. So, you know, in any of those big plot points, you know, like big turning point scenes i think they're really hard as an actor uh, yeah. in this style you, you know what i'm saying because you're trying yeah. to match it back to that that raw aesthetic and that we're still not feeling like we're watching actors but we're just watching people so anytime there was a big kind of thriller beat i think those were hard to do you know some of the scenes with joe Whiteman, who plays luke they were kind of challenging to do um and then honestly i mean, i know this sounds kind of funny but like the the sex scene with sierra that, you know, that my character has with her. I mean, that's kind of, to me, the most important scene in the movie. I mean, if, if you, especially if you watch the movie a second time, you kind of realize, holy shit, this scene sets up the entire arc of the film. Yep. So, you know, I mean, I know we all want to make jokes about sex scenes and everything. I'm not saying it was unpleasant to shoot, but I, I mean, I was genuinely nervous about it, not in the sense of exposing myself or, hey, we're, you know, simulating sex, but I was just like, God, if this scene doesn't work, the movie doesn't work. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that that was a bit, and we honestly we shot that twice. Um, not just because you know we wanted to do the sex scene twice, but because the first one just didn't work. It just didn't get there, and we're like, this is not going to work. So we made it more kind of intimate and more emotional the the second time, and that was what kind of helped get it across the line. And uh, yeah, look, it's weird to say, but that's the scene I'm proudest of. The, the kind of like the sex scene that we have, and then 
how it then kind of reveals the backstory of my character. Uh, it, there was a lot of work that went into making that feel very real and, and you know, organic and um, lifelike, I suppose, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and that's the funny thing. I mean, it's between you and I, because some people, you know, say, oh, this was, you know, the real bits of the movie, quote unquote. And I'm like, God, you know, you wouldn't believe how much work went into some of those quote unquote real bits. You know, the bits that you thought, oh, well, that's actual truth. That's documentary. Some of those stuff were the most worked over, you know, worked over with performance, worked over in the edit. So, yeah, it's nothing's quite as it seems in this film, which I hope is what people enjoy about it. Yeah, definitely. And what was the biggest challenge for you as a filmmaker making this film? Because I know you'd done a lot of shorts before you did this, but what was the biggest challenge stepping out there and doing a feature, but also getting this project off the ground as well? Look, you know, it's just that absolute perseverance it's one thing i've been blessed with i just keep smashing my head against the brick wall i mean you've got to have enough energy like let me put it this way your average australian feature like if it's an independent film it takes seven years to make okay yeah so the challenge of me personally is you have to have enough energy for seven years to drag everyone along with you because you care about it it's your baby you wrote it you directed it of course you give a shit about it Getting everyone else to give a shit about it when there isn't a lot of money, that takes a lot of energy. So that's the thing where you've got to be an energizer of money for years. Um, and you just, if you believe in it, it's easy. Um, but it's just keeping that belief up, keeping that energy up. Um, you know, funding's always hard. Uh, but, I mean, I think for me, the challenge really was in the edit of just blending the, the drama and the, the, the elements of actuality and getting that into a nice... Um, mesh where we didn't suddenly feel like we've taken a turn into drama or we've suddenly veered back into documentary but making it this um, this quilt you know where it's all kind of knitted together that that was just we sweat sweated blood in the edit suite you know my editor Ash Watson was amazing yeah and how do you feel now that the film is about to get released to a wider um, public than just a film festival how do you feel about that now I feel awesome, you know? I mean, it's weird, dude. It's just so much hard work that, honestly, I feel a little bit numb. Like, it just takes so much effort. It's like, even when I finish the film, it's like getting distribution and everything. That's just as much work, almost, as making the film. So, it, it's kind of relentless. You just kind of keep pushing. Um, but I do have moments of real satisfaction. And, uh, yeah, I think once it's out there, I'll probably take a deep breath and say, okay, well, job well done. And uh, on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it's hard to, you just keep, it feels like it never ends, you know, like it definitely doesn't end just when you finish the movie, like, you know, in this day and age, distribution such an interesting thing, uh, that if the game has changed so much, and so much is on you as a filmmaker to get the word out there and use social media and do press, and um, it's, it's a lot of work, so I, I just kind of keep on pushing, you almost feel like you're in a bit of a vacuum, you don't know what's going to connect with people, when you when you're you know making movies and acting, but I just am going to keep on doing it. I'm just going to keep on doing it, and it will hit. I, I guess that's how I feel. I'm, it's kind of like in, you know, it's out of the universe now. We'll just see what the public thinks. Definitely. Well, Julian, to finish up, is there anything you would like to say to our listeners and our readers out there before they go out and check out Use Me? You know, all I would say is that I know it looks like a very sexy kind of titillating movie if you look at the poster and the trailer. Um, but I guess I do just want to say that this is a movie that does have a heart, you know, and it really does have an emotional through line to it. Um, and I think that people who are maybe dragged along to it against their will, like, oh my God, I didn't want to see a fucking movie about some dominatrix bitch on the internet. Like this is, you know, they, they, they ended up then getting really emotionally invested in it. Um, and you know, I've seen people shedding tears in the, in the cinema watching it. So I guess all I'd say is there is more to this film than it seems. So yes, it's a sexy kind of thrill ride and it's a good time. Um, but I, I think it is an emotional journey too, if you go with it. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just can't wait for Aussies to watch it. I mean, look, this is where I grew up. This is home. All my family's here. Um, I'm just so excited for like friends and colleagues in the industry and just the general public in Australia to check it out. Like that means so much to me. That's kind of my, my, you know, my home audience and where I grew up learning how to make films. You know, I went to afters here. I did film school here. Um, it actually means the world to me, you know, that it's coming out here. So I'm just grateful and excited. Awesome. Well, mate, again, thank you so much for chatting to us today and congratulations again on the film. Thank you so much, my man. And look, if you could just send it on when you uh, when you put them up, I'd love to see the articles and share them and everything. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. As soon as it's up, I'll send it all through to you. So our review will be going up either today or tomorrow as well. So I'll send it all through. Uh, awesome. Hey, thanks.
so much. I really appreciate the questions. They're a little bit.